In this video, we'll be going over the bottom-up array approach of interleaving string. And previously, in the 2D bottom-up approach, we can see that in each of the iteration, we are only relying on values from rows i and i plus 1. This means we can use a single array to represent our 2D matrix. Let's go over the dot process. In the 2D bottom-up approach, and in each of the iteration, we are only relying on values from rows i and i plus 1. This means we can use a single array to represent our 2D matrix. Then in each of the row iteration, we can update the values from the previous iteration. Let's go over the pseudocode. So we will still validate the input parameter and check if the length of S1 and S2 is equal to the length of S3. If they are not equal, that means we cannot interleave the strings. We can return false. Then we're going to create an array. We can interleave to keep track if we can interleave the two strings. Then we iterate through the indices for i and j. And then if i and j are both out of bound, this means we'll successfully compare all the characters. Then we can set the current cell to true. And then we'll continue to the next iteration. If i is not out of bound and the current character inside s1 at index i is equal to the current character inside s3 at index i plus j, this means we want to check if we can interleave the strings by moving i forward. So if we're trying to check if can interleave i plus 1 at j is true, this means it's the row below and also at the current column, which is in an array form is going to be at the current cell. So that means if can interleave j is true, then we can just continue to the next iteration because we do not need to set it to true again. So we can just continue to the next iteration. If j is not out of bound and the current character inside s2 at index j is equal to the current character inside s3 at index i plus j, then we'll check if we can interleave the strings by moving j forward. So if can interleave j plus 1 is true, then we can set, can then we can set the current cell to true and we'll continue to the next iteration. If we have failed to interleave the two strings using both of the choices, we're going to set the current can interleave to false, and then we can return can interleave starting from zero. This means if we can interleave the strings starting from indices zero and zero for both i and j. Let's go over the time and space complexity. For the time complexity is of m times n, where m and n are the length of the two input strings. This is the nested for loop. And our space complexity is O of n, where n is the length of the second string. This is our can interleave array. Let's go over the code. So we're going to create a Boolean array, can interleave. And then we we'll iterate to all of the indices for i and j. If the current both of the indices are out of bound, that means we have successfully compared the characters so we can set can to leave at the current cell to true. And then if i is less than s1 at length and at the character at index i inside s1 is equal to the current character at index i plus j inside s3, we want to check if we can interleave the two strings by moving i forward. And since we're trying to check can interleave i plus 1 j is at the cell below and at the current column, that means we can just check if we can interleave at the current cell, at j. And if it's true, we can just continue to the next iteration. We do not need to set it to true again because it's already true. Now, if j is not out of bound and the current character at index j in S2 is equal to the current character at index i plus j inside S3, we want to check if we can interleave the strings by moving j forward. So in this case, we're trying to access the cells right to the, to the right of us at i and j plus 1. That means to the column to the right. This means we just want to access the cell at j plus 1. Then if it's true, we want to set the current cell to true and we can continue to the next iteration. If we have failed both cases, we want to set the current cell to false because we have failed to interleave the strings. And then we have return can interleave starting from index, zero's index 0, which means it's uh, when both i and j are starting from index 0. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.